What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 longest tenured WWE stars. Now these are the individuals that's been in WWE for quite a long time. You know, they're WWE loyalists through and through. Maybe they left at one point and then came back and has been with the company ever since. You know, there's nothing wrong with being loyal to a company or, you know, that you feel is loyal to you. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to check out some of these wrestlers that have been there for a very long time. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into this one, man. Reckon you would be able to withstand the rigors of being a WWE superstar. A year? Six months? Two weeks? The answer is about 10 minutes, and you know <laughs> it, because let's be honest, we're just not quite cut out for all that, are we? The following men nice. and women are more cut out for it than most, smashing the average WWE career length prediction to stand as the longest tenured members of the roster. Before we begin, I must make it clear that we are talking only full-time currently contracted talent that have been employed without any breaks or a notable oh, reduction in no their breaks. schedule. So don't come at me with that. What about edge bollocks, all right? I'm Adam Pachiti oh, so from no Cal Dalek okay. Wrestling, and these are the 10 longest tenured current WWE stars. Okay. Join us. But first, who is the Diesel to your Shawn Michaels? Who is the Rhea Ripley to as the daughter of Jimmy Superfly Snooker and a protege of sorts of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Serona Snooker was never likely to stick around and develop mental for too long. Mm -hmm. Just a few matches into her pro career, Snooker was signed to a deal and reported to Florida Championship Wrestling for about half an hour before making her main roster debut alongside the Usos on the May 24th, 2010 episode of Raw. Rechristened yeah. to Mina, she has wrestled on WWE television every year since. A one time women's tag team champion, Tamina has never really been positioned as a single star, with her most yeah. notable roles being as the bodyguard of AJ Lee, as a member of Team Bad, and her teams with Lana, Nia Jax, and Natalya. Oh, and she married Akira Tozawa. Can't yeah. forget that little gem, can we? These days, the former nine-time 24-7 champion is primarily <laughs> used to put others over... Nine-time 24-7 champions. Fucking wild to say. <laughs> ...and can mostly be seen wrestling on main events. Now in her mid-40s, Tamina is likely in the winter of her in-ring career, but she has had a hell of a run, all things considered. Number 9, Big E. There are yeah. currently question marks over Big E's pro wrestling future as he yeah. continues to recover from a broken neck suffered over a year Sheesh. ago. If Big E were never to wrestle again, he has had one hell of a Hall of Fame career, counting among his many accomplishments the WWE title, Intercontinental title, NXT title, countless tag titles, and mm -hmm. the most impressive hip gyration technique since <laughs> Rick Rude. It all started for E in December of 2009, when the former football player and powerlifter signed a developmental deal. Stints in FCW and NXT led to the main roster, and Big E Langston, as he was then known, made his in-ring WWE debut at WrestleMania 29. It was an encouraging start for someone who would become one of the bedrocks of the company over the mm -hmm. course of the next decade or so. E, alongside New Day partners Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, continues to spread the power of positivity and light up our screens wherever he shows up. Considering Big E was at a loss about what to do following the end of his athletics career and never envisioned sports entertainment providing a living, he has done very, very <laughs> well for himself <laughs> and those hips of his. Number 8, The Usos. The twin sons of Rikishi, Jimmy and Jay Uso, may oh. Not Jay anymore, because he said he quit. <laughs> They've made their main roster WWE debuts alongside their cousin Tamina Snooker, but they had actually been in the WWE system for longer. Not since day one-ish, whatever that means, but a fair while. The Usos signed their developmental deals in the summer of 2009, with Jimmy making Damn. his FCW debut several months before Jay. They were inexperienced when they put pen to paper, having only wrestled a uh. handful of independent matches, but WWE evidently believed that they had a ton of potential when they promoted them after so little time in their farm league. I think it's fair of me to say that they've done alright since then, and it's yeah. certainly been interesting watching their evolution over the past 13 years. Roundly considered to be one of the best tag teams on the planet, the Usos have umpteen classic matches and, alongside Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa in the bloodline, are doing their best ever work. Mm -hmm. Seriously, these lads are still in their 30s and are peaking after close to 15 years as a fixture on WWE TV. That's crazy. Scary. Number seven, R-Truth. 
Speaking of scary, has anyone found out whether our truth is actually a vampire or not? Or what's the deal there? Yeah, dude just doesn't age. <laughs> the Ageless Wonder had a previous underwhelming spell in WWE as K-Quick in the early 2000s, but came back a much more well-rounded performer in the summer of 2008. He's a gym, he bro. didn't come back without his share of heat mind, having made some choice comments directed toward the likes of John Cena and Vince McMahon while working for TNA in the interim. But Truth quickly became one of the WWE WWE chairman's favorites, his mm -hmm. versatility and willingness to do whatever is asked of him, making him plenty of supporters in the writer's room. Since yeah. rejoining the company, he's been a hated heel pushed to the main event level, wrestled in various tag teams, won the 24-7 title <laughs> 54 times, no exaggeration by the way, and has been involved in some very memorable moments indeed. The 51-year-old's legacy will likely be how much he made the old. WWE universe smile and laugh with his off-the-wall and I personally will remember Truth for his ability to secretly live for centuries by drinking the blood of the innocent. Number six, Facts. Sheamus. <laughs> this Before point. WWE's hiring department figured out airports and work visas and things like that, there were very few spots on the roster for grapplers emanating from outside the United States. The current crop can thank the success of guys like Drew McIntyre and Sheamus for properly opening the borders. The fighting Irishman did the indie thing for about five years before several tries outs led to a developmental contract offer in the spring of 2007. Sheamus has been on the books for 16 plus years at this point time. and is quite clearly one of the hardest working members of the roster. Like most who tend to stick around for the long haul, the Dublin born brawler is a proper utility player who can effectively years. work as a heel or babyface, can be put into any title scene and works well in tag teams or as a member of a stable. He has won pretty much everything there is to yeah. win in WWE, Except worked with pretty much all of the major names and is still out there producing bad Banger after banger after no, banger he's had after some banger great matches. almost two decades into an extraordinary career. Nicely done, fella. Number five, Natalia. A third oh, generation yeah, prospect she's from the legendary <laughs> Hart family, Natalia Neidhart was always going to, at the very least, get a look in from WWE. Debuting in 2000, she gained valuable experience internationally before signing with the company in January of 2007. Damn. After getting a taste of Deep South, FCW, and OV. Nightheart made her televised WWE debut oh, she looks on the so April 11th, 2008 then. episode of SmackDown. How incredible is it that 15 years later, she's still going strong? For a long time, a so-called WWE diva could really only hope to have a couple of solid years on the main roster uh -huh. tops before the company got bored and moved on to someone else. The Queen of Hearts has outlasted everyone else by being one of the workhorses of the women's division, happily uh -huh. wrestling on every pay-per-view, episode of television or house show WWE books her on. In this fact, is she is legitimately recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the female for having the most WWE pay-per-view appearances, most matches, Whoa. and most wins. A Damn. solid and established veteran, she's had to weather some dodgy creative, Natalia oh. Nightfart anyone, but has played oh, an yeah. integral... She, she's had to endure some horrible creative, but she stuck, stuck to it and stayed part in the evolution of women's wrestling in WWE and added to the Hart family's legacy. Number four, Kofi Kingston. It didn't take WWE long to figure out they had something special on their hands with Kofi mm -hmm. Kingston, signing him to a developmental deal after he had been on the Northeast indie scene for just five months. Damn. Assigned to Deep South Wrestling in the fall of 2006, Kofi also spent time in FCW and OVW, as well as intermittently going out on the road for house shows and dark matches at WWE. WWE TV tapings. His big break came as a member of the ECW roster, making mm -hmm. his televised debut in January of 2008. Kingston has been an ever-present over the past 15 years, supplying a comforting consistency every time he steps in the ring. Very the high-flying New Day member's reward for years of service was an improbable WrestleMania world title Beautiful win moment. and title run that he had earned 10 times over. Beautiful While Kofi moment. may never reach those lofty heights again, he will always 
always be a welcome presence. Still only in his early 40s and having remained remarkably injury free considering yeah. his style and how many matches he typically wrestles annually, Kingston likely has many more decent years left in him. Number three, The Miz. Things were tough yeah, for Mike Miz has been, been around at the start for a of his long WWE time. career. His peers resented him for being on reality TV show The Real World, they resented him for getting his foot in the door via yep. Tough Enough, and they resented him for, well, they resented him for just about everything, really. Facts. At one point, kicked out of the locker room and forced to change in closets and arena stairwells, the odds of The Miz sticking it out and becoming a success weren't great. Proving his naysayers wrong, Miz worked tremendously hard to get better and earn... And much respect to him, bro. Even when the odds were stacked against him and people didn't even want him around and people didn't even think he would make it, he's still there. He's still doing his thing. May not be, you know, agree with his wrestling style, but apparently WWE still wants him there. He is, he is a staple for them. So. and the respect of his fans and fellow pros. Within just a few short years of his backstage exile, he was holding the WWE title and main eventing WrestleMania opposite John Cena. Yeah. Seemingly allergic to taking a day off, Miz is a true company man who puts the brand before himself and does his task, whatever that may be, to the very best of his abilities. Mm -hmm. He may not be everyone's cup of tea, but the Grand Slam champion has deserved everything he's ever gotten and serves as a great example of how perseverance can pay off. Yeah. Number two, Dolph Ziggler. A standout three-time All-American amateur wrestler, Nick Nemeth signed a WWE developmental contract. Just watched a video about Dolph Ziggler and, uh, you know, his, his rise and then fall and rise and fall continuously in his career and he's been around in wwe for a long time as well right all the way back in 2004 giving up a place in law school in favor of pursuing a career in sports entertainment Crazy. in those early years nemeth had a couple of full starts first as the caddy for the lamentable mm -hmm. kerwin white and then as a member of the spirit squad yep. after quite literally being shipped <laughs> back to OVW in a box nemeth toiled for a further two years before re-emerging on raw as dolph ziggler the bloke who really Really, really liked introducing himself. It wasn't much, but it was the start of a journey that has seen the show off become a triple crown champion and cement himself as one of his generation's most respected wrestlers wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Seriously, Dolph can do it all without breaking a sweat and can be plugged into any match, scenario, or storyline at will, making him incredibly valuable to his employer. Ziggler has built quite the resume and can always be counted on to put a shift in, whether he's in the main event or the open match. Number one, Randy Orton. Mm. A total natural who was frankly annoyingly good from the get-go. <laughs> Questions nonetheless <laughs> remained over Randy Orton's maturity and character and whether or not he would be an all-time great or self-destruct. The third generation star was allowed second, third, fourth and fifth chances during those yeah. early tumultuous years where his talent was never in doubt. Signing a WWE developmental deal in 2000, That's the Bible wild. was a member of a famed class that included such luminaries as Brock Lesnar, John Cena, and Batista. They all either left or went part-time, but Orton has been WWE through and through since making his debut on the April 25th, 2002 episode of SmackDown. Jeez. Racking up almost 2,500 <laughs> matches since the turn of the millennium, Randy is routine. 2,500 matches? That's a lot of matches, y'all. That's ridiculous. Certified GOAT. What are we talking about? <laughs> Decided as the best in the business by those within the business, and at this point, there's not much left for the two-decade veteran to accomplish. Yeah. He has won pretty much every title. He's won the Royal Rumble, Money yep. in the Bank, Main Evented WrestleMania, and yep. wrestled and feuded with pretty much every major star there is yep. in pretty <laughs> much every type of match. Currently convalescing after undergoing major back surgery, the 20-odd years of bumping have clearly taken their toll, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't bet against the legend killer being better than ever if and when he does come back i hope he is able to come back man i i really i really do hope he is able to come back <laughs> oh man that's a lot of matches for one person to have but once again we're talking about a legend a goat himself man so comment down below let me know man who is i guess your favorite 
wrestling star that's been in the company for a very long time in wwe specifically who's your favorite wrestling star that's been in the company for a long time we're talking about right now actively still in the company whether you know they're you know they're injured or off time you know if they weren't on this list let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k and i'm still getting the speed of youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace